Good morning and welcome to worship from Chelmsford Methodists. My name's Sheridan and I'm going to be leading worship this morning on the first Sunday in Advent. Some words of prayer to begin. The day is near and so we wait. We wait with hope for the broken hearted to be healed, for the downtrodden to be lifted up. We wait for the coming Christ child. In the meantime, we will sing into the silence. We will light a candle against the darkness. So let us sing into the silence now and join together as we sing light of the world. You step down into darkness. <laughs> together our prayers of adoration and our prayers of confession. God of hope and mystery, anticipation, preparation, we wait for a kingdom of this world and the next and a king appearing when we least expect. Heaven touches earth, footsteps of the divine walk dusty roads as once they did in Eden and a people, searching for a saviour, walk straight past the stable. Open our eyes and hearts that this might be an advent of hope for the world, where those who seek will find the Christ child born for them. Forgive your people who slumber when there is need for comfort or peace to be shown, who hesitate where there is urgency for your love and grace to be known. Forgive those of us who are weary of travelling, tempted to go our own way. Forgive and restore both faith and hope, that by your grace 
our lives might proclaim the good news of which we sing. Amen. This reading is taken from Matthew 24, verses 36 to 44. But about that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Thanks be to God. Born to set thy people free From our fears and sins release us Let us find our rest in thee strength and consolation are you? When our daughters were small we would anticipate big events by counting the sleeps. How many sleeps till a birthday? How many sleeps till the school holidays? How many sleeps till Christmas? Perhaps you are a patient person, perhaps you can have a bar of chocolate waiting for you and it can be there days before you tackle it and eat it. We're at the beginning of Advent, a time of waiting. 
perhaps you will open an advent calendar in the next few days. That's something to help us in the waiting, isn't it? It gives us a little reward each day. We open the window, we see a new picture. And now you might not just get a picture, but you might get chocolate as well. The word advent comes from the Latin word for coming. Something is coming. And the advert with the Coca-Cola lorry tells us that the holidays are coming. Well, something is coming, but what? This morning, I'd like us to think about three questions. What is waiting? What are we waiting for? And what difference will it make? Waiting is difficult. The measure of our NHS is often taken in terms of waiting lists. How long will you have to wait to see a doctor? How long will you have to wait to receive your treatment? Whether it's waiting for exam results, waiting for a bus, waiting for news, we often see waiting as time wasted. In our increasingly instant world, we're becoming much less tolerant of waiting. The Methodist Church has a stationing process and it's a very long process from the period of time that a minister decides that it's time to move on to the point at which they start their new role. And that can be a very long time of waiting. My experience as a minister's spouse is that very quickly people will start asking you, are you packing yet? Have you packed up yet? Are you ready to move? And that starts a, a time where you feel neither one in one place or the other before you start again in a new place. And they're asking you, have you settled in yet? Which is lovely, of course. The word liminal comes from the Latin word limin, meaning threshold, any point or place of entering or beginning. A liminal space is the time between the what was and the next. It's a place of transition, a season of waiting, a season of not knowing. Liminal space is where all the transformation takes place. If we learn to wait and let it form us. Jeanette Winterson, in one of her books, talks about being shut outside of her home. Her mother would shut the door on her and she'd sleep on the doorstep, on the threshold. She was neither in nor out of the home. And she describes liminal space as being like going to watch a trapeze artist. The trapeze artist starts on the swing on one side, up high, and swings and swings eventually to get to the other side. But the reason that we all go to watch the trapeze artist is for that moment in between, that moment when the trapeze artist flies through the air and we're waiting to see what happens next. That's the excitement that we're there for. The theologian Richard Rohr describes this liminal space as where we are betwixt and between the familiar and the completely unknown. There alone is our old world left behind while we're not yet sure of the new existence. He says that's a good space where genuine newness can begin. Get there often and stay as long as you can by whatever means possible. He says this is the sacred space where the old world is able to fall apart and a bigger world is revealed. Advent is a time of waiting, yes, a liminal space, but perhaps we can change our perspective to see it not as a pre-Christmas frenzy when the jobs to get done seem to exceed the time available, but as a sacred space, a liminal moment 
a threshold to a bigger world. So our question, our second question, what is it we're waiting for? At Christmas we celebrate the first coming of Christ, the arrival of God in human form, a child who would turn the world upside down. Matthew, writing in his Gospel, refers to the second coming of Christ. Jesus describes himself coming like a thief in the night, arriving when we least expect it. No one knowing the day or the hour that Christ will come to judge the living and the dead. I wonder what images were conjured up for you as you heard this passage. Perhaps the man with the sandwich board claiming the end is nigh. Two will be working in the field, one will be taken, the other left behind. How does it make you feel hearing these words? Perhaps uncertain, frightened, vulnerable. I want to suggest that there's a different way of interpreting this passage. I want to suggest that as disciples of Christ, with the Holy Spirit living in us, we already embody his second coming. While some may wait for Christ to descend through the clouds, the reality is that Christ comes to us each time we connect with him, through prayer, through worship, through the bread and wine. Christ comes again each time we invite him. I guess the answer to the question, what are we waiting for? is not what we think. One of the points made in this passage from Matthew is pay attention. Do we pay attention? Do we pay attention to what's happening in our own relationship with God, in our relationships with others? Do we pay attention to what's happening in our communities, in our world? Are we bringing God's presence into those places? Which brings us to our final question. What difference will it make? Christ will come again through us, his disciples. What difference does it make to carry the presence of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit into the world? And the world needs the light of Christ now more than ever. The words from Isaiah are still waiting to be fulfilled. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. We're still waiting. The bombs are still falling in Ukraine and Yemen. We're in a liminal space, a time of waiting, a time of discernment, a time when we can determine the future. Like Dickens' beloved character Scrooge, the future is never set, but it's always coming. We are left to prepare for the future. Lighting candles in the midst of growing darkness is the Christian way of waiting and preparing for that. So I pray that in this time of Advent, this time of waiting, this liminal space, we pay attention to the light of Christ we have within us. That we let our light shine so that it may guide not only our footsteps, but light the path for others, so that no one is left behind. Amen. Join with me in our prayers of intercession, our prayers for others. Let us pray. Creator God, we pray for our world a planet that is broken, communities at risk of flood, drought and extinction because of climate change. Come 
Let us walk in the light of the Lord. God of peace, we pray for places where there is no peace. We pray for places where there is only war. We pray for Yemen. We pray for Syria. We pray for Ukraine. That fighting may cease. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. God of justice, we pray for our own country, its leaders and those who seek to lead, that they may seek your kingdom values in our country. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Comforter God, we pray for those we know who need to feel your comfort now, those who are sick, those who mourn, those who are waiting for news. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your sharing with me in worship this morning a final blessing these are instructions for living a life from Mary Oliver pay attention be astonished tell about it to pay attention this is our endless and proper work 
Amen.